and welcome to this conversation brought to you by White House Custom Color. I'm Jed Toffer, and today I'm speaking with Cliff Mountner. How's it going? It's going great. What what brings you out here to Las Vegas? <laughs> you know, you know. I was just thinking <laughs> when people do uh, interviews and whatnot, and I always see these these people giving certain people a hard time, and the guests would like give one word answers to make the the interviewer sweat a little bit. You know, so I was going to like I'll I was going well. <laughs> I'll fill I'll fill his face. <laughs> One of us is gonna fill it, either you or me. Yeah. So it's like how how hard do I want to make Jed work here? People are gonna want to hear you more than me, but if they have to hear me, <laughs> they they will. No, it's uh listen, this is I've been coming here since oh four. I've been speaking here since oh five. Um I, my main duties here, I had a platform class for WPPI and I'm a Nikon ambassador for mm-hmm. the US and uh as a brand ambassador, you know, we uh uh, we am bass, uh, <laughs> you know, so, uh, that's great. Yeah. So uh, a, a good little, verb, little Nikon talk and, uh, uh, it, it mainly, honestly, um, these are my friends. Uh, they're, yeah. they're, they're, um, you know, the first few years I have to say, you know, a lot of them were acquaintances and then I call them photo friends and now that they're just friends and, yeah. uh, if I get to see them a few times a year, uh, we pick up where we left off and the community here is, is, you know, spectacular. Not to mention, um, I kind of met my wife here too. So Kinda. yeah. Yeah. So that's, um, <laughs> you know, little stuff like that. So this, this organization means a lot to me. It is a special place. How, you've been coming here since Oh four. Is yeah, that right? Yeah. That's it. Yep. So what happened between Oh four and Oh five for you that then you became <laughs> a speaker? It was Oh four. Uh, okay. This is actually a funny story, but I won't mention names. Okay. We'll keep right? names out of it. Um, I, I saw a program, Jed, that I thought was so dreadful and <laughs> so disastrous. Okay. Now I know why we're not and mentioning names. so lame Okay, that I said to myself, my God, if that person is being <laughs> propped up there, yeah. I can do a much better job than <laughs> okay. that. Okay. Right, right. And then I went and I sought out. Uh, someone told me um, to go seek out Bill Herter, uh-huh. who yeah. is everyone's friend. Yeah. Uh, the late Bill Herter, who yeah. was just one of the most great dude, amazing men uh, in the history of this industry. Agreed. And um, uh, the, 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 just to preface it, one of the great things about Bill and just the organization is they give, they're open minded. It's not a good old boy network like maybe some other organizations. And the, if you have something to say, uh, were you reading into that? Are you? Um, <laughs> I don't if know you what you're have talking something about. to say, uh, <laughs> they give you a platform to say yeah. it on, and and he he's he was instrumental in many people's lives yeah. in giving them that platform. And then Nikon took notice, and they took notice of my work, and I've been working with them since uh, '04. And oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And that and it was all because of Bill who who gave me a voice and showed my work, and and so that was really wonderful. So. Um, uh, it, but it was a really poor seminar uh, mm-hmm. uh, that, that I motivated said, you to- yeah, I said, this is terrible. Um, <laughs> I know that I can do better. I was a photojournalist uh, with the Philadelphia Inquirer for 15 years before my wedding career, uh-huh. which started when I got shit canned in 1998. Uh, okay. in like the, like the second round of layoffs. Okay. Uh, boy, the writing was on the wall then in mm-hmm. photojournalism. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, there was a, a bunch of us that got canned. At the time. And yeah. then it's like, okay, um, now what? Uh, I was doing a lot of corporate work and whatnot. And and then I, you know, turned to weddings. But, um, you know, I had to, I shot, uh, 17 years I was a photojournalist, 15 with the Inquirer. And then I'm like, okay, now what? I had to foray into weddings. Uh, and so for then, 20 years, you've been a wedding photographer? Did yes, I do yes, that since, right? Yeah, absolutely. Since 98, I've been a full-time wedding photographer. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, teaching my my, my boot camp since uh, uh, 07, which we'll get to, I, I would assume. Uh, mm-hmm. very, very, very extremely proud of those. But um, in, in 04 and 05, uh, I was just a busy wedding photographer. I mean, I was doing literally 55 to 65 weddings a year. Uh, that was back in the film days, of course. My goodness, I was, yeah. yeah, it was insane. By yourself. Well, I had an like assistant. That, but I mean, it was but, you. You weren't, that's, that's oh, not no, like. Oh, no, no, I was shooting them, yes. You were the shooter. Yes, and not right. only that, I was, uh, you know, taking the film to the lab and, right. and, and reading the negatives, reading the negative yeah. numbers to my lab, you know, this print, that, you know. Yes. Uh, uh, 23A, 28A, 26A. <laughs> I, I mean, remember. it was kind of sick. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, 
uh, doing my own album design and all that. But when things uh, got away from analog, mm. I was lost, man. I was an analog guy in a digital world. So yeah. uh, that's when I hired a studio manager in, in 06, and, and it's been bliss ever since. So uh, it's gotten a lot easier. My life's a lot easier. And basically, uh, WPPI meant a lot to me then. It still means something to me now. Right. Uh, they gave me a, a big opportunity to uh, to be able to uh, say that today I run my business from my golf cart. Is that right? Yeah. So that's kind of where we are. That's pretty slick. It, it, yeah, I aspire to that. Yeah. That would be nice. It's, 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 <laughs> it doesn't suck. What? Let's, let's do this. How, considering um, that you have... You have experience. You're not a new kid on the block. You've kind of been there and done that. You know what's up. How, in the last 20 years specifically, since you've been photographing weddings, how many times has the internet or the the industry cha- changed significantly? Well, you, you see, you, it was a Freudian slip when you said internet. Oh boy. It might have uh, been. Yeah, I think so. Because I totally didn't mean to. Yeah, it, it, you know, in how has the industry changed? Well, um, from from then to now, the number one word that I will use is devalued. Okay, mm-hmm. the industry itself, from a client perspective, it's been devalued, and there's many reasons for that. And I can't sit here and point fingers at at you know at the iPhone or this or that. Right. There's there's not any one thing. Uh, the uh, the advent of, of information at your fingertips, the advent of education at your fingertips, the advent of the iPhones, the advent of digital cameras being very easy to use, the learning curve, the admission into the the field itself without any real qualifications or any expense has contributed to that. And then today, I think where it's gone is. Um, <clears throat> uh, it, 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 years, a few years ago, um, good enough used to be, yeah, it's, it's good enough in terms of the work. Today, I think there's people that are confused when they look at work because they think good enough is beginning to look good. I think you know, oh, when, when you see good enough is the new good. Good enough is the new is good. Because you know, I, I, I don't think that uh, there is enough research done by the client or enough di- differentiation between photographers. Many sites look the same. The way they light things look the same. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's very easy to get a properly exposed photograph. And, you know, I, I think that's that's done a lot. Now, you know, I, I, I'm still hanging in there. You know, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just going to say I'm right. not afraid to admit that it's harder for me today than it's ever been to book weddings. So I'm right. still surviving. I'm still shooting as my primary income. I'm right. putting kids through college. I've saved. I've invested. I was smart. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, there's still nothing easy about it. Right. Right, so, so it's it's only gotten harder. So it's harder. Yeah, the the easy answer to your question is that there's no easy answer, but I'm working harder to stay working hard. Oh gosh, okay, yeah. You 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 say things in a in a in a very uh, intellectual way. <laughs> I'm working harder to keep working hard. Yeah, I see. So what what's what's the future hold then? Oh, you don't you really Uh-oh. want to go there with Uh-oh. me? Yeah, I do. All right. Um, I think diversification. See, I'm gonna I'm gonna go stay with the positive. I think diversification is going to be critical. I am not sure if someone that is only shooting weddings mm-hmm. will be able to, in a full time fashion, be able to truly support full time a family mm-hmm. on what they earn just from shooting wedding photography. Right. I think those days. If they're not over their ending, mm-hmm. um, I'm hoping that things might get cyclical and maybe, you know, just attrition will help uh, drive the market back. I was up. wondering about that. Is <clears throat> it going to swing around? I don't know. Right. I've heard in the portrait industry that's that's sort of been some of the case mm-hmm. where people were doing, you know, really cheap sitting fees and whatnot. Right. And, and now things are getting a little bit better. But listen. You and Vicky have been in this for a long time, mm-hmm. and you know w- what the value of portraits were just a few years ago. Yeah. I think it's the same thing with weddings. I just don't know, uh, except for the very high end, and I, I tap into a good part of that, whether or not you know people are willing to value photography enough to spend what they used to. So you you stick to weddings. You're you don't do portraits. I I I do. But it's not something that I have actively been marketing and pushing. And, and uh, I, I'm, my weakness 
Okay, I have strength and weak, strengths and weaknesses. Sure. I, I, I know my strengths. I really know my weaknesses. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, I can shoot. I can teach. I know light. Uh, I can speak to people. Um, I, I, I provide a wonderful experience from a, a wedding day standpoint, customer service standpoint. I know how to talk to people. Mm-hmm. But where I fall short is in marketing. Is that right? Oh, definitely. Okay. You know, the, it, my, my marketing used to just simply be um, put a full page ad in the magazine, do a killer job for people, take care of them, have them love what I do, and then just the word of mouth. And that's why I was doing 55 to 65 weddings a year for a long time. I've been doing this 20 years. I've done over 1,100 weddings. Do oh the math there. Yeah. yeah. So it's been a really good ride. Now it's just harder. Is it so that's not enough anymore is what you're saying? I oh it's absolutely not enough. It's important to give customer service, it's important to do a right. good job, it's important to get referrals. But no, it's 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 SEO, it's it's Instagram, it's it's uh uh it's a continued uh communication with, with the client throughout the process. There's there's so many things that quite frankly I'm just not really good at. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, and then the answer would be, well, get somebody that is good at it. And I've given sure. my studio manager, Heather, I'll right. give her a shout out. She's been amazing. Uh, Noel before that. Um, I, I, I'm an easy guy to work for. I've only had uh, three studio managers in 12 years. Oh. One of them was only with me for a year because she, she left. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, her husband got transferred. Right. But, um, yeah, I, I've been pretty easy guy to work for. So, uh, She's great. She is. She is my savior. What's the diversific- diversification mean for you then? Uh, I'm doing more corporate work. Okay. I am attempting more portrait work, uh, and of course, uh, I'm still going to do my you know uh, my thirty weddings. Last year it was uh, forty three. This year, uh, my numbers are down for for right now for weddings. I'll probably wind up doing around thirty five to. 38 mm-hmm. and frankly that's okay that's right I, I i don't really want to work as hard as i used to right but you know but those numbers aren't down deliberately it's not like i made a conscious effort someone wants to book me i'm not gonna lie i'm gonna book it right what needs to happen in the industry to quote unquote turn things around <clears throat> uh <laughs> <laughs> i think the cat has been let out of the bag. Okay. And I don't know if you can, you know, stuff it back in. Um, I think so maybe me phrasing the question was off. Like it's not well, a matter a, of turning the industry around. What, that can, was probably what loaded. can I do personally? Maybe that was a loaded question. The, 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 the answer has to be with the individual. I have to get smarter. I have to work smarter. I have to market smarter. Um, I have to prove my value and my worth to clients each and every phone call. But then that magic word phone call, nobody wants to freaking call anymore. Everything is an email. And so it's, it's my job and, and my desire to get someone on the phone to let them hear my story so they can get a sense of not only the experience I'll be able to provide, mm-hmm. but the experience I bring with me to the table to be able to give them the best imagery possible. Sure. And when they, just call me, you know, or, or email and ask for a PDF. You know, I mean, my experience is not seen on a spreadsheet. Yeah. And that's hard. But that's, again, I'm not going to be the old crotchety guy screaming, get off my lawn, when I know that there's things that I can do, which is to work harder, work smarter, and just, just there's things that I can do to improve my own situation and, you know, uh, I, I can't, if I sit there and point fingers, then it's just, you know, the old adage, if you're not, you know, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Sure. So you, you've done a lot of speaking, um, a lot of boot camps, a yes. lot of workshops, dealt with a lot of people. Oh, yeah. What sorts of things have you learned recently, let's go last five years, mm-hmm. from the younger generation than us? Almost all of the people that come to me are not full time, one hundred percent, making a living from photography. They right. are something else, and this is a supplement. Right. I think that is the smartest thing that they could possibly do. Is that right? Absolutely. I think it's a huge leap of faith to quit your daytime IT job. Yeah. And become a photographer, because sure. if you've got a family, I just think right now with the state of flux that the industry is in from a financial standpoint, mm-hmm. I think it's almost irresponsible to quit that security 
Um, For most people, certainly. I right? think so. Mm-hmm. And then, so keep uh, your day job. Well, m- that's my advice, but that doesn't that doesn't mean that they can't excel at this, right? And once they're, you know, they see something in the numbers that you know, they're either the numbers are growing or they're truly doing well, and it's something that they desire to to continue to do, then they can think about it. But mm-hmm. uh, so almost all the people that come to me are, um, they're in that boat. It's it, yeah, they're they're deciding if they want to transition or they've transitioned and they want a little boost or I even get the, uh, I mean the, 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 the people that come to the workshops, those are the people I really get to know because it's, I, I have uh, 20 students, um, four times a year and I've had people from 42 different countries come to the workshop in, mm. in the last 11 years. My goodness. And they range from ages 17 to 72. Okay. And they all come for something different. They all have different levels of, of experience, different levels of expertise. Um, they, they, you know, if it's an amateur, let's I, I had a, 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 a thoracic surgeon come because he's a photography fanatic and obviously doesn't need the money, right. just loves it. I've had the, uh, the person who was just laid off from their marketing or whatever job and that this is something that they always wanted to do and right. they wanted to, to make a go at it. Uh, the portrait photographer that's not necessarily weddings wanting to learn better lighting skills. Right. Um, you know, the husband and wife team that, you know, wanted to do something together. I get a lot of that. Do you have people that come through that really affect you from a personal standpoint uh, a great every deal. so often? A great deal. And I'll tell you a very somber story, which is, a man who was uh, shooting weddings for 35 years or so from Florida. Um, we became friends. He took my workshop a couple years ago. His name was Frank Danino, and he just passed away. He took my workshop again this past October because he told me that my workshop, he wanted it to be his last. But he never stopped wanting to improve, even after all those years of being in this industry. He gave his heart and soul to his clients, his family, very religious man, so it was really his faith, his family, his clients, never stopped trying to learn, Yeah, came and tried to get better and better, and just, that was, um, photography to Frank is like my golf. As much as yeah. I love photography, I still, there's nothing like getting on the golf course and right. breathing that air and moving around. And But it, 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 Frank affected me deeply because um, his passion and his kindness to others um, you know, I've been affected greatly by many. There was another woman uh, who was in her early 20s with stage four cancer oh, goodness. coming to my workshop. Uh, I could tell you, I mean, I, I could fill up this entire podcast. Mm. I've had, oh, you know, well over a thousand people come to my workshop. So, so, do so you it's find, 20 people for how many years? Do you find that the workshops for you, like sometimes you leave them being more fulfilled than maybe you intended like you didn't like you leave them and you're like, I'm the one that got so much out of this. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, the first, the first day that they come, I, I go around and I, I pretend I have this magic wand and I bring it over their head and I'm like fairy dust. I'm like, poof, if I had a magic wand, what can I make sure you leave here with? What skill can I provide you with that you came here for? Cause I am going to guarantee that I'm going to do everything in my power that you leave here. Is with. that right? Yes. I like that. Most of the time it's, it's flash or something else or something, sure. you know, better use of light or business skills. There's that. Um, but what, what, what happens is, um, I get something out of it much yeah. more, uh, whether it's, uh, uh, a lot of times, uh, the, these people come from all walks of life. Okay. Uh, again, whether it's physicians or, or MBAs or, or, you know, marketing gurus or, you know, a, a few years ago, Rob Galbraith came to my workshop mm-hmm. who, uh, if you know who he is, he, he ran that photography uh, equipment blog and he's one of the smartest people I've ever met. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I was nervous about this guy coming to my workshop. <laughs> you because, were nervous about him being there. Well, because I, I, yeah. I know my crap technically. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. But I mean, he knows it inside and <laughs> He's out. He's on another level. And I didn't want to, yeah, and I didn't want to <laughs> sit there and, and, and make any type of technical error oh, I know grammatically it. whatsoever yeah. because I know there was a watchdog in the room. Yeah. And, as, and it, but he was an awfully nice guy. So, you know, it, it keeps me sharp um, and, and, and it warms my heart when, when I, I meet certain people. And then, of course, not to be negative, there's always, there's always a person, and I can tell on the first night where they have 
fucking that guy stamped on their forehead. Yeah, that's okay? the one. That's and the guy, so, yeah. But what I've been able to do, so they're not a distraction, is I looked them right in the eye. I said, oh, you're that guy. You're the guy. <laughs> or that girl. Yeah, right. All right. I don't want right. to. Uh, sorry. That, me, I don't want to do reverse me too here. Yeah, you're that person. Yeah. You're so, that person. Because what I want to make sure of when people come to this, and we can move on from this uh, workshop, but it was a good question. I want to make sure that everyone has the best possible experience with no one dominating the time. I have eight models at the workshop, so there's right. no shortage of that because no, there's not a shootout. People aren't right. elbowing each other. Right. But it's my job to make sure that they get the best experience, and I don't want one person ruining for them. So I, I'll I'll sit on that person to make sure they don't. <laughs> what, what what do you want for yourself personally between now and the day that the camera isn't put away for good, but that the golf clubs come out more than the camera? I'll never stop shooting. I don't think I'll stop teaching. Right. But I don't mean to sound overly dramatic, but. All I really want is good health for me and my family. I mm. I don't really give a crap about anything else. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, that's that's your thing. You want to be healthy. You want your kids healthy. I don't think there's anything else in right. this life. I have a friend of mine right now uh, uh, here. I'm not going to mention his name because mm. I don't want the. Uh, but he is um, an incredible. He's been a judge. He's he's one of the best photographers in the world. He's in Desert Springs Hospital right now with with something that is seriously going on with his mm. heart. Mm. Um. My friend, uh, uh, my friend Mikey Mann at home, I'm going to give my buddy a shout out. He'll never listen to this because he's not a photographer. <laughs> uh, he's my, one of my best golf buddies in the world. And he said, you know, dude, we're not here for a long time. We're here for a good time. <laughs> like, now, I don't necessarily subscribe to it quite like that. <laughs> but man, you know, there's something to be said for that. So. Um, so well, you yeah. need your health for that. That's Ted, for sure. That's it, if it, you don't have your health, what do you what do you have? And money means nothing right. if you don't have your health. Right. So yeah, health first. So that maybe wasn't the answer that you're looking for. That's a pretty but good I, answer. I I would have to say you know beyond health, um, to be able and I say this to my students too because they say what keeps you motivated and the answer to that is it's a good question to continue to have the hopes that these things that I shoot, I can still make pictures that move me. Mm. And the byproduct is that they'll move the client. But it's not the hero portrait. It's not the, you know, the, it, it, and, and nothing against hero portraits. It's the <laughs> found moment. Yeah. But I've been doing some experimenting of late. Because, yeah? Yeah. Because there's there's been, you know, talk on the web and just, you know, the underbelly of the internet, you know, just, it, it's ugly. And, and we all know what that means. Yes, sir. Um, where people talk about, you know, rock stars and hero shots and all yeah. this other nonsense. So for maybe for one or two days or three days out of the week, I'll, I'll post, you know, a, a, a really interesting, a, a portrait of a couple that, you know, really beautifully lit, you know, just well done that would that would you know maybe score well or has scored well and, and uh, whatever in a, a competition and then i'll post a really one of my most beautiful found moments and it will literally get zero attention on social media whatsoever because people just don't give a shit about real is they, that right that i'm telling you yeah i have done it you have the data to back it up i have done it deliberately yeah and it makes my heart hurt. Yeah. Because I'm telling you something, the clients are not going to care about that hero shot 10 years from now. They're going to care about that quiet moment that they were sharing with their parents. Yeah. Or whoever it might have been, a grandparent or a brother or something. Uh, I just got a, an email yesterday, Jed, that, um, uh, Dear Cliff, this is so and so. Uh, you shot my wedding 14 and a half years ago. True story. I'll show you the email. Yeah. Um, my father-in-law just passed away. Mm. Uh, can you, do you happen to know if you have those negatives? Yes, of course I do. And right. I'm going to mail them to her as soon as I get back. Right. Well, return receipt requested, of course, but mm -hmm. yes, of course I can. But so, and I have some really beautiful photographs, uh, you know, of, of family interaction there. She didn't ask me for, Hey, can I get that portrait that you did uh, right. of the two of us in the park with right. uh, that, you know, cool light. Right. Right. So, I mean, those are, the, those are the things that I still look for. And those are the things, those are the photos that I still uh, thrive on with excitement. 
what do you still, well, what's, what is the next thing that you want to accomplish? Um, well, I've accomplished longevity in the industry. <laughs> Done. I've, check I've, off, I've, check I've, off your I've list. I've gone there. Uh, I, you know what? I think I, I, I want to, uh, 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 if, if anybody's ever listened to me before, they they know that I am straight, man. And mm-hmm. I'm straight with you. And I'll just say it. Last night I did my, I believe it was my 15th straight platform class at WP. Really? Yeah. I used to do a lot of plus class. This that. I'm like, and it took me a month to prep for it because I put in 80 to 90 new images, yeah. uh, new stories. Uh, I pulled out some, older images that, that maybe might have been a little recognizable, some stuff that maybe some, won some awards years ago, mm-hmm. stuff that I love that I haven't shown in a few years. Uh, pulled a couple out of cobwebs that were really bad just to show people that they can improve. Right. Um, but there's only so many different ways that I can deliver my message. And so I don't know how much longer I'm going to stand on a platform with WPPI and give the same message because... I don't want to be one of those guys at WPPI or girls or whatever it might be that people point to, and I won't mention names, <laughs> and say, God, they, they, they dropped that shit on us again for 90 yeah. minutes? Yeah. I don't want that. Yeah, right. So, you know, if I'm going to do another one, I'm going to, it's, it's, I want to continue to inspire, to stay relevant, to keep making pictures that move people. If I can do that, then I'm going to keep going. Keep evolving, keep changing. You have to. Right. I've evolved with the industry because, you know, I, I, I said this a little bit yesterday. I went from photojournalism from, you know, 1998 when I got canned, mm-hmm. laid off. I like to, I was canned. It wasn't <laughs> layoff, you know. You laid off a bunch of people, you're shit canning. Yeah, yeah. Um, They're getting fired. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, and uh, it was not an easy transition. You don't just, you know, everybody thinks, oh, wedding, and I'll say it like this, wedding photojournalism. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, mm-hmm. it's not, that. it's not easy mm-hmm. to just, it's not about making, capturing moments. It's not just about, you know, the word candid. It's it, it, candid is not photojournalism. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't care what people think. It's, it, it's <laughs> photojournalism is, it, is, it's, it's, uh, uh, it, it, it is storytelling. Yes. But it's, it's about, uh, working a moment. It's about finding the decisive moments within the moments themselves Okay. and not giving up on the moment. And, and, yeah. and, and, and it's not, you know, Oh, I, I got a picture of, of the dad, you know, talking to the daughter and got a nice picture. I took two frames and move on. Well, maybe that you didn't exhaust the opportunity from that moment. You got to work the story. So but, would you say that photo, this is intriguing to me. Would you say that photojournalism requires more of a maybe an intentional anticipation like there's anticipation yes you hit the nail on the head anticipation okay. and when you can't anticipate you must react okay okay but the point that i'm trying to get to as i belabor everything with words okay um is that i was clueless i knew how to capture moments i knew how to work moments i knew how to make images look interesting but i didn't know how to make people look beautiful mm. and that's what i needed to do as a wedding photographer mm-hmm. so if you can't mix the two it, you know, it, there's a lot of good wedding photojournalists out there, but I, I wouldn't want them shooting me because right. I want to look good. Right. <laughs> you know, and yeah. and I, I think brides want to look good. Of course. So those are the things that um, th- th- that I had to become. I had to learn how to be a portraitist. I had to, to learn how to use light better. Um, you know, as a photojournalist, I really was not very adept with speed lights. Yeah. So those those are things that are skills that you have to learn. What you, you have a lot of good tidbits, a lot of good advice. Um, what's one thing to wrap up that you want people to know? Whether it's advice or something about you, you have something to say. Let's envision you're on the soapbox and you're in front of the photography industry as a whole. What is something that you have to say to them? As a wedding photographer. Mm-hmm. It's not about us. It's about the client. Hmm. And Diane Arbus said, this is her quote, for me, it's more about the subject than the picture. Hmm. I believe that is, it, I think it's verbatim. Mm-hmm. And that uh, I think there's so many people out there that would prefer to shoot to impress photographers. Hmm. 
so they can get likes on Instagram. Yeah. Instead of making pictures that are simple. And it's the simple that makes it difficult. If you can make simplicity look fantastic, then you've created something special. That's interesting. You know, yes, if you, don't you can have make to, simplicity look fantastic, yeah, you don't have it's to hard sh- to do. You don't have to shoot through 60 layers to make an interesting photo. Right, right, right. Yeah. That's good advice. It's also a good challenge. I like that. This was great. Thank you for your time. Uh, it's my pleasure. I enjoy talking to you. We had a great You're conversation. You're a busy guy. <laughs> on the other phone, <laughs> a lot man. going on. <laughs> uh, I, it, it's, it's fun. I, enjoy, that's, I do enjoy being busy and coming here. And I, I, did, I did take off a few hours and play golf with my buddy yesterday. Oh, I, well, I played for, hooky you from gotta, WPPI. You got to get that in. Absolutely. <laughs> I, well, I was here two days early to play. Yeah. We're out in Paiute. And in, uh, by the 17th hole, it started snowing. What did so. you shoot? Uh, I, I, yesterday, I shot 76. Oh, buddy! I had yeah, no yeah. idea. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a. You got game. I, I well, uh, and I hope to continue to get better. Golf is a lifelong journey. I could go out and shoot 76 this week and shoot 82 next week. So, but are it you is, like a, a six or a seven or an yeah, eight? Yeah, I, right now my my index I believe is like a seven point six. My goodness! But again, I want to get better. Well, I won't be I won't be making any bets against you on the course uh, anytime soon. That's the beauty of golf, though. It's uh, <laughs> it's it's got handicaps. I play with well, my buddy at home. I'm Jen, a forty. <laughs> well, I play with my buddy who's a twenty three, and we have yeah. great we have great matches. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. It's a humbling game, though. I you, you you only borrow it, you never own it. That's why I don't play it as much because I phenomenal. I can't stand being humbled that much. <laughs> oh, it's it is it's not just humbling; it's humiliating. Oh, when, my when goodness. you lose it. Oh, forget about it. And I've <laughs> lost it plenty. No, I'm, I'm, I just love the game. Well, thanks again for your time. My Hit pleasure. them long and straight the next time you're out and about, and I will see you on the flip side. Thank you, Jed. Regards to Vicky.